I can't even say that this movie is the worst Resident Evil adaptation. Because we can't forget that it's competing with the heavyweight shit-stained movie series by Paul Wuss Anderson. But the way Paul butchered the series was by making five ultraviolet sequels and calling them Resident Evil. Also, he'd occasionally throw in characters from the game series to remind fans of the franchise that they're watching a Resident Evil movie. So that's how those movies can easily be summarized as. But as for this pathetic movie? Let's see. The true title should have been References Evil, a biohazard parody. Because apparently I was right. After seeing the first two trailers, I couldn't help but notice the overload of references with each second of the trailer. But the biggest red flag was that those references were either based on a cutscene from the Resident Evil 2 remake, or they were popular references that anyone can find on YouTube. Like seeing some random big-headed lady write the words itchy tasty on a door. Like, once I saw that, I, I knew that the director or writer of this catastrophe was just simply looking up popular keywords on the YouTube search bar. There was no subtext to any of these references. They were merely put in the film just to bait fans into pointing at the screen and saying, I, I understood that reference. But just so you know, if you watch this movie without any knowledge regarding the games, trust me, you'll still be just as confused as a fan of the series would be from watching this shit. It's not worth your time. Throughout the movie, every minute included a thin layer of bullshit that would make me cringe and want to write some notes down just to point them out when I write a review for it, but immediately I'd be shown even more bullshit that made me further cringe and forget about the previous crap I was writing notes on. I'm not even kidding when I say that I had that confused Shrek look throughout the entire movie. I wish my reaction was captured. You could really see the level of disappointment and embarrassment on my face, said my fiance. I can't believe this movie was made. Ten movies in. And this is what it's come to. Let's see if I can remember everything. I'm not watching that product again, so I'm just going by everything I remember. So, for starters, let's talk about the story. Everyone knew this was going to be a problem, yet the writer of the film thought it would be a fantastic idea to make a movie that covers everything from Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, and even throw in a stupefyingly confusing reference to Resident Evil Code Veronica. I'm going to spoil everything, by the way. The moment they showed that Code Veronica reference, it made no sense at all. Because the footage that this Claire and Leon are looking at is supposed to show how kids were being experimented on. But the clip they're showing has no experimentations going on. Just a reenactment of the Ashford kids and their weird incest of a bond that they share. It had nothing to do with orphans being experimented on. The filmmakers would know this if they played the fucking games. But of course, since these morons know nothing of the franchise that they're dry humping, they just look up a bunch of popular clips online and said, Hey, let's throw that into the movie. I want people pointing at the screen at all costs. But let's start from the very beginning. The movie begins by showing us that Claire and Chris are orphans and William Birkin is looking after them at an orphanage. But he's also experimenting on some of the orphans. They use his orphanage from the RE2 remake and load it in with as many pointless references. But they also throw in Lisa Trevor. And right away, I don't understand what the hell is going on. Is she being held captive? Doesn't look like it. Looks like she could just walk off anytime. If they don't even know that she's wandering around, I mean, it's just the orphanage walk out, open a door, or something. Is she supposed to be a secret? When she exposes herself to Claire, Claire speaks to her out loud, but none of the orphans hear this. Not even Chris, who's right next to her. Oh, but he does hear her when it becomes convenient to the story. After Burke and finds Claire wandering around the building, Chris shows up in time to cover for her. He could hear her when she's all the way over there, but not when he's right next to her. Perfect, right? That's just a small nitpick, but the real questions lie within Lisa Trevor. They don't look into her background even after Claire knew her full name. Not once does she bother trying to find out more about Lisa Trevor until she's digging through files near the end and happens to stumble upon some more references and Lisa's file happens to be there. If it wasn't there, Claire would never bother finding out about what happened to this woman. So she met her at a very young age and that's it. And it's not like I can just look up Lisa Trevor's background in the game series because every single character that shares the same name as a character in the game series 
is nowhere near nor remotely close to their video game counterparts. So no, you can't just look up Lisa Trevor online and use that info as a description to her in the movie. Every character is a completely different person. They don't share the same personalities, which is a huge red flag, and they don't even look or dress like them. And if they do dress like them, they're poorly represented. The worst character, it's gotta be Leon. I never thought I'd see the day when we'd have a live action movie adaptation of Resident Evil after so many games and movies with Leon S. Kennedy, and this movie just took the biggest, stankiest dump on his chest. This definitely subverted my expectations. I thought this Leon was going to be the Fast and Furious version of Leon that we get in Resident Evil 4, and so forth. But this guy? It's so bizarre to see this version's Leon. Not only looking like a completely different character, but becoming the biggest pushover character in the movie. I guess it's a good thing that they didn't get an accurate representation of every character in this movie because I sure as hell would have been 10 times more pissed if Leon looked and acted exactly like he does in the video game version and was treated like a bitch boy. I think there was more insults thrown at Leon every time he spoke with someone. Heck, even that human-rabbit hybrid they call Ben Bertolucci treated Leon like some dumb little kid. And speaking of Ben Bertolucci, Jesus, man, the, the, one of the stupidest scenes right there, he's in the little jail cell, tells Leon, hey, get over here and open the door, dumbass, and he's like, uh, who, who the hell are you? Why should I open it? Just, just come here, come here. And then he just fucking grabs her and come open this door. Leon's just like, get, get off me. What are you doing, dude? And then he takes his gun. And oh yeah, Ben is locked up with another person that's slowly turning into a zombie. And Ben knows what happens with people that are infected. He knows about this stuff. He has a gun and he tells Leon, open the door. This, this guy is sick over here and I know what happens when they're sick. You know what happens when they're sick? Why don't you fucking shoot the guy? You have a gun. Shoot the dude. No, no, he instead points it just at Leon and says, come on, get the key, it's right there. Now come on, open it. And then as soon as he opens it, he still takes some time and says, whew, something like that, like, whew. That was, that was close. And then the zombie guy, of course, gets him. It's like, oh my god, the level of stupidity with every single character in this movie. Who? Even if you only want to blame the writer or the director, nobody questioned it. Nobody looked at it and was like, hey, shouldn't you just point the gun at the guy right there? The, the guy that's turning into a zombie in his cell? Come on! Come on! Where's the common sense? I... I don't understand the mindset of anyone who worked on this movie. How could they deliver with such an embarrassing abomination? This movie made me feel embarrassed for watching it in theaters. Didn't help that there was only two other couples watching the movie there but in its premiere day, might I add. But I don't want to dunk on the movie for saying that barely anyone in my city wanted to watch that movie because if anything, that would mean that there were hundreds or even thousands of people that looked at the trailers and said, Nah, bitch, I'm cool. I think they should be proud of themselves. I really do. The word that will run through your head every second going by in this movie is, Why? Why is that there? Why is he there? Why is she there? Where's the common sense? Why are they acting like that? Why was that in the movie? Why are all these storylines taking place in the same fucking day? Why was there a lady that had a big head? Why did she write itchy tasty? Did she eat anyone? Didn't look like it. She was just turning. That reference only makes sense to where it came from. There's a story behind it. You can't just take references and be like, there you have it. Oh, you guys know this? Yeah, we know, but you don't. Such a phony move, man. Damn, I, I hate how all these people that don't understand something, they try to act like they know it, just by throwing in references that they found on YouTube. You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. Ten movies! Ten movies! <laughs> I gotta tell myself that. Ten movies! Not a single one has gotten it right. So yeah, why did that lady have a big head? Why did her son have a big head? Was there a different virus going on? Why do some zombies look like this? Why do others don't? But then, like the 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 way that the virus was leaked. Oh my god! Like I'm telling you, I'm trying to think how how do you how do you put all these things together and expect them to make sense? Nothing made sense. 
Not a single thing made sense. The biggest, the biggest bullshit scene of them all would have to be the moment when the truck driver crashed in front of the RPD. Oh my god. Nobody saw that scene and said, you gotta cut that shit out, man. This belongs in a fucking dank meme. You, you cannot possibly tell me this movie's supposed to be a serious tone film. And then the fucking truck driver run, like, he crashes in front of the RPD. The whole thing catches on fire. Leon's in front of it with the fucking doors wide open so he can see the whole shit happening, but he's got his eyes closed. The ground would vibrate. Come on, with a collision like that, you can't possibly say, I didn't see that coming. I didn't hear that. I didn't feel that. When you're right in front of it, dude. If Leon wasn't a main character, that dude would have been dead immediately. There were so many times he should have died, but plot armor saved his ass. Same goes for the other characters, but especially with Leon. And this was one of those moments. That truck should have crashed through and killed the motherfucker. But it didn't. And the, the stupidest part, the part that was just like, this belongs in a fucking dank meme. The truck driver walks into the fucking lobby on fire and then they play this song that makes it seem even more like a joke and that dude is just walking towards leon like that on fire tell me that's not a fucking dank meme oh my god and then irons brian irons has to save leon the guy that was just dunking on leon the moment leon was introduced to like he walks into the stars room like, where they're all having their, their brief meeting they're not even doing a good job at that either. They did. It was a horrible representation. But it was so funny. Leon walks in. They're like, Leon, what the fuck are you doing here? Get, get the shit out of here. He's like, get out of here, you fucking idiot. They were all dunking on his ass. Even when in his first introduction, when they were in this cafe, they were spitting out their stupid references. Oh, my, my sandwich. This is Jill's sandwich. She should have also looked at the camera and winked while she was at it. But then they started messing with Leon as well. And I was just like, Jesus Christ. What is this? Who's this movie for? If it was for fans, trust me, they're all fucking pissed. Nobody's gonna look at this product and say, I love it. What, with all those references? You kidding me? Raccoon City was no city. Look at that view they showed. That was a tiny little, tiny, tiny little, maybe possibly a village, you could say. It had like around 200, 300 people population, for sure. I mean, the mansion, no, not the mansion, the, the RPD looked like the biggest building there and everything else was just tiny little little uh nice lovely looking suburban houses and that was it you had to have seen this bullshit to believe what i'm saying but i don't want to recommend anyone to watch this movie that movie is the worst movie i've seen in a fucking decade worst movie especially if you're a fan of resident evil so brian irons was like he gets attacked by a ps3 cerberus and he gets saved by claire she jumps in Wax the crap out of the PS3 Cerberus with a fire extinguisher. Leon runs in and he's like, put the gun down. It's like, oh, God. How did you become a police officer? How are you breathing? Let's skip to the part when they meet the first liquor. The liquor shows up and then it kills Brian Irons. And it's kind of funny. While it's killing him, you hear Brian Irons struggling. But his struggles don't sound like, I'm fucking dying. It just sounds like, ah. <laughs> what? And they drops him, and and the stupidest part is the fact that before, like, let me let me uh, step back for a bit. Before they revealed it, Lisa Trevor shows up and reveals herself to to this version's Leon, and uh, I'm just gonna call him the bitch. Nah, I can't say the bitch boy because YouTube's gonna be like red flag. So this version's Leon sees her and she's like, shh, look up, basically points to look up, and he doesn't understand. Of course, it's this Leon. And he's like, Claire, come here, guys, and they look over. Yeah, there's more plot armor right there. He's yelling out loud, guys, guys, come here, or Claire, come here. If the liquor was right there, it would have immediately killed him. But no, plot armor. This is supposed to be Leon, of course. So no, we got to get rid of Brian Irons since he does die in the games. So it made no sense as to why Brian Irons died right there. But these two, now nah, let him live. Even though it made sense for them to die at that moment since Lisa was like, hey, there's got to be quiet. Fucking liquor's up there. And then she fights against the liquor. And, uh, there was nothing impressive about it. If anything, while it was trying to, like, when it, when Lisa basically kills him at that moment, I was like, dude, the liquor, why isn't it immediately using its giant claws to just pah, smack her from behind like that? Or its tongue to pah, lash her. No, it, everything was just convenient. At that moment, the liquor had to die. It could have saved itself. It could have done all sorts of things to immediately 
avoid that from happening, but no, you know, you gotta get the story going. They're trying to fit three fucking movies into this game. I mean, this movie, of course. So, she gets rid of it, and from what I remember, that's the last time you see her, and nothing else comes of it. So, when Raccoon City gets blown up and everything, or, yeah, 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 Raccoon City got blown up. I, I vaguely remember a picture of a cow and a tiny little village, and the village gets blown up and the cow just gets thrown back. I was like, hmm, I wonder, if, I really wonder who, who wrote that in. And when Raccoon City blew up, I was like, wait, is that Raccoon City? Is it already blowing up? Huh. Well, I don't care. As long as that means that this movie's about to end, I was like, that's good news. Oh, yeah. The Alpha Team and Bravo Team. I haven't even spoken about the other characters. Only the ones that annoyed me the most. So, the Bravo Team, and we see only one of the members, I think? The one that was being eaten alive by the, the zombie that's supposed to reference the first zombie we see in the series. I've already mentioned how that lab coat looked all cheap. It looked like they literally just put that on and purposely ripped certain sides here and added a few little bloody textures here and there. It looked like they got that costume straight out of the Halloween store. No bullshit. But that moment, that whole moment when they were in the Spencer Mansion, it was not good. It, the references are part of the problem as well. If anything, they made me hate the movie more because I was like, I can't believe they're trying to take this and trying to say, look, we're representing it in a live action. No, you're not. You're butchering this. You're taking uh, something we loved, the Spencer Mansion, and you're fucking everything up for us. You're doing a horribly poor representation of everything here. Did Uva Bowl have a part to play in this? Because you guys, you ever seen the movie... Alone in the dark? You ever seen that one scene where all these soldiers are fighting all these creatures and they just do a lot of strobe light effects where where you don't see anything going on except for like a frame or two? Who the fuck thought that was a good idea? Most of the action scenes in the Spencer Mansion were like that. Bam, 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 bam. Just quick flashes and you don't see anything. It's like, how is anyone supposed to be frightened here? Everything was such a mess. Not to mention, there was this character in the group, in the Alpha team. I don't know who it was. It wasn't Barry. I don't think I heard his name mentioned. He kind of dresses like Richard Eichen, but Richard Eichen's from the Bravo team. And uh, and then they also mentioned Brad, but then Brad was the guy in the helicopter. He gets attacked in the helicopter by a zombie that breaks through the glass, and yet he still managed to go up in the air and then ride straight towards the mansion to crash onto it. They also threw in the piano puzzle. Wesker shows up, plays three keys, and then the door opens? Like, what the hell? This movie's such a fucking mess! I seriously believe that this movie was a student film. There's no way this had a budget. It looks so utterly cheap. PS3 graphics everywhere. Everything was horrible. And whenever they did use practical effects, it was very cheap. So cheap that it, 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 it surprises me, because I always thought that going practical, even if it looks cheap, it still looks better than CGI. But no, too cheap can too be a problem. So, I guess that's one thing I learned from watching this crap. And then William Birkin, when he turns into his, his uh, G-forms, oh my god, they were so bad. Not only, I'm not talking about like the, the, the version you see in the trailer where it's that CGI PS3, close to PS2 graphics, cinematic cutscene looking tyrant, when that scene kicked in. Wow, blink and it's over. But when he was in his first form, he's supposed to be tall, dude. He's supposed to have that giant arm, but it looked so tiny. It looked small size. It was pathetic, weak. Everything had a weak execution. That's the thing about this movie. They threw in so many things and every single one of those had a weak execution. They introduce someone in a weak way. They get rid of that thing in a weak way. I just don't understand why they thought they could cover all three events in one film. They don't show a single example of an outbreak in the city. No large crowds of people panicking. No chaos in the streets with police cars and SWAT teams trying to handle the situation. Oh, but I guess how could they? I mean, this Raccoon City should have been called Raccoon Nest because of it's a tiny. The fact that it's a tiny little town that appears to have the population of around 200 to 300. It, it is nowhere close to the Raccoon City we know of. Even by the end. When we see the village get blown up, I was left confused, just wondering, like... So they destroyed the, quote, city? And we never even saw an outbreak? What a waste. <laughs> Again, I gotta say it. Ten movies! 
This makes it the 10th Resident Evil movie. Should have been the, the 11th, since uh, Resident Evil, what was that other one called? Infinite Darkness should have been a movie. It was a movie, but they just spliced it into pieces to try and turn it into a series. Like, no one would notice. But yeah, 10th. This is the 10th Resident Evil movie. I think this movie is going to be used as a form of torture to get people talking and admitting to things they never did. Forget waterboarding, electrocution, or whatever methods are used. Pop this bitch in and watch the poor bastard lose their sanity within the first 20 minutes. If you want to see an accurate representation of how a Resident Evil movie should have been like, you have the S.D. Perry novels, which means the Hollywood phonies can use that and create a movie that accurately depicts everything in the novel. I mean, if Hollywood phonies for some reason can't stop looking at video games like their personal kryptonite, then at least this way they can try to adapt the video game novel, and it would be the best way to go for a successful RE flick. But I think that's about it. That's as much as I want to talk about this movie. I don't I don't want to watch it. I will never watch it again. I will definitely look forward to seeing other people dunk on this shit, that's for sure. I just gotta cleanse my mind of this catastrophe. I feel ashamed. I feel ashamed of watching it in theaters. I feel ashamed of being an Ari fan. Thanks, movie. Fuck. <laughs> That's as much as I can say about it. Oh, boy. Gotta love living in this reality, right? Let me know what was the worst thing you hated about this movie. I highly doubt there's anything you guys like, so I'm not even asking for that. Just write down all the things you hated the most about this movie. So, with that said... That's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to give this video a chance to grow. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for their impeccable generosity. Your support means a lot to me and you are part of the reason why I try to make the best content that I can. And if you like this content, check out the rest of my channel. You'll find more entertainment from separate franchises I like to cover such as Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, Celebrity Deathmatch, Men in Black, The Mask, Batman Comics, The Terminator, TMNT, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, and more. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out my exclusive videos such as the Gantz content. And if you'd like to show your support, go to my Patreon and support the channel, which is only a dollar. Sacrifice that McChicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.